How's it going folks? I'm Des with Desfit, and it's been two years since Wahoo introduced their Element Realm Byte Computer, which added full-blown mapping and navigation to their Element Byte Computer lineup. And I've been using the Realm for quite some time, and there's plenty of things I like about it, and there's also some things that I'm not so keen about. So in today's video, I'll be sharing nine things that I like and don't like about the Wahoo Element Realm. So number one on the list of things I like about the Element Roam is I love the button configuration with these three buttons right on the front of the device. These buttons just make it really easy to use when you're actually writing where all you have to do is just use one finger where you can just register a lap, pause the workout, change data pages and other functions depending on which screen you're on. With having the buttons accessible from the front of the device, it makes it just a lot easier to use than buttons that are mounted on the side of the device, which generally necessitate you having to hold the device by both sides to press a button. And that's where Wahoo just uses the side buttons on the Roam to perform lesser used functions like the left button, which is a power button and which is also used to access settings, and the two right buttons that are used to change how the main data page is displayed, zooming in and out of the map page, and they're also used for scrolling through different menus. On the flip side, one of the things I don't like about the Roam is that it doesn't have a touchscreen, but I really only miss this feature when I'm looking at the map though. When I'm writing along normally, when I don't need navigation, I generally just have it on the main data page and then I can just cycle through different data pages using one of those front mounted buttons. But when I do want to browse a map of the area around me to see what's around, this is where I do miss having a touchscreen. Number two on the list of the things I like about the Element Roam is this incredibly easy to see high contrast 2.7 inch display. It's amazing outdoors and whatever coating they used on the display makes it incredibly easy to see even at an angle. There's also not much of a gap, if at all, between the top of the glass and the actual pixels, which again lends to that easy readability. And there's also quite a bit of detail on the maps that you can see right here where there's a lot of information that can be displayed at one time. However, I do wish it was a little bit less grainy. But one thing I don't necessarily like about the display is that this actually is a color display, but they don't necessarily utilize colors all that much throughout the interface. I do like that they didn't go overboard and use colors everywhere, which actually could be distracting, but I do feel like a few more splashes of color could be nice. So you'll see colors utilized sparingly, like on the map page, which basically has main roads in yellow and then bodies of water in blue. However, emojis are in color, so you can see the inappropriate emojis that your friends may be sending you in all their glory. Number three on the list of things I like about the Roam is the interface, and I think they put a lot of thought into this. Like on the main data page, which has a feature called Perfect View Zoom, which allows you to show up to 11 data fields at one time, but you can actually zoom in to high data fields that you may not want cluttering your screen, and it makes all the other fields larger. You'll set the priority of the data fields from the most important up top to lesser important data fields at the bottom. And as you zoom in, it starts hiding the lesser prioritized data and then makes the more important ones larger. So for me, I have mine set up to show my power information at the bottom. And what this allows me to do is hide the data if I'm out on a ride where I don't care about that data. But where I also find this handy is if I'm riding one of my bikes that doesn't even have a power meter. But this does lead into one of the things I don't necessarily like about the Roam, which is that there isn't really an ability to set up different ride profiles. So let's say I wanted to have one profile specifically for mountain biking and then one profile specifically for road biking, which would have different data page and data field configurations. And then the same thing goes for indoor and outdoor riding, where that's actually just a setting that just turns GPS off and it isn't an actual different ride profile. However, there is a flip side to this, which I'll get to in just one second, but this does lead into number four on the list of things I love about the Element Roam is that you can customize all the data fields and pages via the Element smartphone app. So with the app, you can switch out all the data fields. And by the way, there's an insanely huge list of data fields to choose from here. And you can choose the priority of the data fields for when you're using the perfect view zoom feature. And I find it just much faster using my smartphone than trying to customize all those sort of data fields on a device itself. But going back to what I said just a second ago about not being able to set up different ride profiles, there is something Wahoo did here that's kind of smart though. So if we look at some of these data pages in the app, these data pages will only appear if needed or if it's in the correct context. So for instance, the lap data page will only show up as an additional page if a lap is triggered. Same thing goes for kicker bike control, planned workouts, as well as Strava live segments if you have those set up. I like that Wahoo has simplicity in mind with the interface and I think they're trying to reduce a lot of the clutter which allows you to focus on the data that you really need to see. But you can still go ahead and add custom data pages if you'd like. So you'll still be able to add different layouts if you'd like in addition to the main data page, the elevation data page, and the map. And although it is amazing that you can do the customization of all the data fields and pages via the Element smartphone app, number four on the list of things I don't necessarily like about the Roam is that you can't do that level of customization on the device itself. So let's say you're out on a ride and you don't have your smartphone with you and you want to swap out one data field for another, well, you won't be able to do that. I generally have my data field set up way beforehand and it's pretty rare that I want to swap out a data field during a ride, but in those sort of situations, it would just be more convenient to have more customization on the device itself in those rare situations. 
But one thing that's kind of interesting and really nice about customizing data fields on the app is that this all happens in real time. So when you change a data field on the app, the changes happen instantaneously on the Roam, which kind of makes up for the lack of the on-device customization. And number five in the list of things I love about the Element Roam are the navigation features when you load in a route. I really like that the details of the route are very clear where it gives you the distance to the next queue, your heading, the direction of the next turn, and the name of the street or trail that you're supposed to turn on. And what I also like about this interface is that they use contrast really well here where it's clear and easy to see the direction and road name with the black background and white fonts, which just makes it stick out. There's also a very detailed list of all the turns of the route, and these were available for me whether I used the Element app to create the route or if it was a route that was synced over from Strava and even mountain bike routes from MTB Project where it showed trail names. When the Roam was initially launched, I think that the turn names were only available if you created the route using the device itself or using the Element smartphone app, but it does seem that the queue names are now available using the supported third-party services, so it doesn't seem to matter where you get your route now, you still get that sort of detail. And another thing that's nice in regards to navigation are these chevrons that indicate the direction of travel while you're on a route. And these can be really beneficial if you're on a route that may cross over or double back on itself. It's just super simple to know exactly where you need to go. I also like that you can use the take me to feature to route to a specific location. And this can be done from the smartphone app as well as on the device itself. You can also create a route from your ride history. You can sync routes from third party services like Strava, Komoot and Mountain Bike Project. You can retrace a current ride and you can also route back to your start location. And this can also be accessed from both the smartphone app as well as on the device itself. However, one thing with that Take Me To feature that I don't necessarily like is that you can only pick one specific point and it'll route you to just that one spot. You can't pick multiple points, so if you're intending on going to some place kind of far away, it just loads in the suggested route and that's it. You can't choose multiple points, which I think would be amazing if it had that ability. Number six on the list of things I love about the Element Roam is the out front mount. This thing is super svelte and it creates a nice, clean, aerodynamic look for the Roam when it's mounted. However, one thing I don't like about the mount is that it looks similar to a Garmin Edge mount and it looks like it should mount just fine if you already have a quarter turn mount on your bike, but it's just a bit different where it's oriented by 90 degrees off from the edge mounts. But Wahoo does offer this little adapter that you can purchase as an accessory that'll make it work if you already own a bunch of Garmin quarter turn mounts. But just note that the computer will sit up a little bit higher because of the height of this adapter. And we're on the home stretch now, and number eight on the list of things I love about the Roam is that it has Garmin Vario radar integration. I think it's great that Wahoo adopted the Vario radar standard, which allows their bike computers to utilize Garmin Vario radars, which gives me just a little bit more peace of mind while I'm on the roads. And number eight on the list of things I don't necessarily like about the Element Roam is that I was only getting about 12 to 14 hours of battery life, where their advertised battery life claim was 17 hours. So I was hoping for a little bit closer figure. And number nine on the list of things I love about the Element Roam, and this is probably the most important, is that it just works. It's been an incredibly reliable device and I haven't had any issues with it crashing. It's incredibly stable and it pretty much always connects and syncs with my smartphone. And the GPS accuracy also has been on point where I literally have not had a single issue with GPS accuracy over the extremely long time I've been using it. And this goes for road rides, gravel rides, mountain bikes, whatever. I know I could always rely on it for accurate GPS data. And for one bonus item that I don't like as much, I do think that the Roam is a little bit chunky, but it's not that much bigger than an Edge 530 that's on the left, and it's a bit smaller than the Edge 1030 that's on the right. And I do also wish that the bezels on the side of the display weren't so pronounced, but I sort of understand the need for a bit more bezels since they have these LED lights that can indicate different information such as heart rate and power zones. And for one bonus item of something I like about the Roam is that I positively love this upload to Strava button right here in the app. Sometimes Strava's down and it's not having a good day where it's not syncing with third-party services. So in those sort of situations, it's just nice to have that button. So when Strava does get back up and running, you can just click that button and your ride will be uploaded to Strava. But even with the Roam shortcomings, I do like using the Roam. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that it's easy to use, it's easy to see, and it just works. Anyhow, if you liked the video, if you found the information in this video useful, make sure to hit that like button down below. And also subscribe to the channel for plenty more sports tech reviews just like this one. In the meantime, happy riding, and we will see you in the next video.